Hi, thanks for having me here. It's a great pleasure to talk to you today. So, yeah, um, I'm talking to you and I'm going to present you my study w with the title The Curse of Tissue Memory and How Our Body's Past Can Harm Our Health. So, you probably have seen it already or are familiar with this. This is an inflammatory skin disease that is actually very common and today I'm going to tell you about this skin disease and how it is connected to memory. So um, skin as the other organs are barrier organs. They are not only barriers actually, they are uh, sensing the environment, they are exchanging gas, they are absorbing nutrients. So they have to be kind of open and also not like a tight barrier. And the skin and all the other organs are actually represent tiny, small microenvironments consisting of tissue cells, skin cells, immune cells. Needlessly to say, immune cells are important for our body at these barriers to protect us from pathogens, bacteria, virus, whenever we are injured. So what happens is they are recruited, they are fighting, they are eating virus and bacteria. This is a process we are calling inflammation. It comes with collateral damage, though, so, but eventually, over time, our wounds heal. We get scars, we, and um, we regenerate, we recover. This is part of our body, so our immune system learns it all the day, all the second. It, they learn how to tolerate good bacteria, they train how to fight against future bacteria and viruses. But our body is far from being perfect. And in reality, our body is much more exposed to different kind of environmental stress, different form of stress. And this actually leads from the process injury and infection to wound healing several times in our life, which is actually harmful because the immune system can go crazy, which eventually leads to repetitive, excessive immune responses, which are actually very harmful to our body. This eventually leads to chronic inflammation, and all these events are accumulating over our lifetime. And with the accumulation of these events, stressful events, damaging events, chronic diseases are developed. And chronic diseases, that's this, the other side of the coin. Bad memory. What is bad memory? Bad memory in chronic diseases such as allergies Many people are familiar with allergies. It's very common. There are also other inflammatory diseases. Inflammation in the skin, in the intestine, asthma in the lung, arthritis in the joints where the immune system attacks our joints. So we don't understand why. Also, for, for example, organ transplantation where immune cells from a donor kidney also attacks the host body. It's a very severe condition. People with organ transplant are lifelong on medications against immune system. So chronic inflammation is lifelong, incurable, affects everyone, can affect everyone. It comes with a high burden. The expenses for one patient in the US is about 30K dollars a year. Three of the most sold medications are actually used to treat inflammation. It's not rare. We know or maybe were even affected by different kind of chronic inflammatory disease, asthma, psoriasis in the skin, arthritis at the joints. And um, yeah, it is estimated that one of 10 actually is affected with an autoimmune disease that we are not aware of it now. So yeah, my study is focusing on psoriasis. It's a skin disease. We see flares. It's actually the flares and the red patches are places where the small wars happening where immune cells are fighting our body. And the cause is unknown. We don't know what triggers. There's no cure. Three to 8% are affected with this disease worldwide. And um, of course, it's chronic. The immune response is very chronic. The treatments, there are treatments. They exist, but they only ameliorate the symptoms. And of course, with this disease, the risk is higher to get other diseases that are chronic as well. So what we can see here is a patient with psoriasis, with inflamed skin regions, 
that got treated in 2016 until 2017. But once the treatment stops, psoriasis comes back. So why does psoriasis seem to be gone, but not forgotten? So our, the central question I have in my study is, how does memory contribute to the cycle of inflammation? And what mechanisms does it have to trigger psoriasis again after such a long time? So, and, but the question is, what is memory in our field? How can we look for it? Memory is very complex defined, like it has multiple levels. For example, is memory maybe just a signal from a molecule which triggers a biological signal? Is it, how complex is it? Is it in one, in different cell types? Is there a quantitative difference between memory cells, few cells, or like tons of memory cells? How is memory formed over time? How long lasts the memory? Is it lifelong? Is it really lifelong? And also, is memory like, can we find memory only in one cell, maybe in another cell type, maybe in a community of cells that cooperate to keep memory over a long time? So there are many questions regarding memory, and we need to, to in order to answer it, we need to look at different kind of cells. Immune-driven diseases, autoimmune, classic people look at immune cells because these diseases are driven by immune cells. So, but to this day, we already know that many other cell types are actually contributing to inflammation as well. Neurons, muscle cells, skin cells, blood vessels, they all play a part in it. And we need to reframe, to broaden our view, to go away from immune cells, to actually have the whole environment and by having the view on the whole environment, we have a better resolution, how they interact. We may find new cell-cell interactions that are very important for memory formation. So we want to define a new ecosystem. And this will help us to understand which cells are involved. Where are they? How do they communicate? But as said before, memory can be everywhere, even within the single cell, and its features. Memory can be in form of molecules, proteins, RNA. Maybe there are memory proteins that are long-lasting, that contribute to uh, inflammation. Also the DNA, it's like a book. Once inflammation happens, the cells put like so, some sort of bookmarks into the DNA to open it faster and stronger, to accelerate the inflammatory process. So we need to collect all the information from all different layers to really define what is memory. But how do I look for memory exactly? How do I know this signature is a memory signature? We need to be able to look into the past. How do we look into the past? We do longitudinal studies. So what I do is we, we study patients with psoriasis. We have also healthy donors. In parallel, we are running mice experiments as well. And what we do is we sample skin biopsies from patients which have severe acute inflammation. And we will also sample skin biopsies from healthy donors to compare with psoriasis. And the, our first results show already that the, what we see here, uh, that the microenvironment where each color depicts a certain specific cell type is completely changed compared to the skin microenvironment in healthy donors. So we already see a black-white difference, but we don't, know, we don't really understand what happens now. So we have to wait. So rises patients are getting treated um, during a certain amount of time, and once they recover, we will sample them again, the exactly the same patients and exactly the same healthy donors, and we will compare their signatures, the delta of recovered patients and healthy donors, to really find out what is the data signatures, the differences between them. And by that, I hope to convince you that, um, that understanding the memory is maybe the key to understand chronicity in these kind of diseases. And with this, we want to tackle outstanding questions like, is it possible to override the past of some individual diseases? And is this maybe the way to break the cycle of chronic inflammation. 
And with that, I want to end my presentation. And I want to thank, of course, the tremendous support of the lab, the physician scientists from Hadassah and Tel Aviv, but also our um, patients and healthy donors that are ready for, this for the opportunity and, of course, your attention. Thanks. <laughs> Uh, Raphael from Barilla. Uh, you, you talk about prevalence of the psoriasis, like uh, between 3 and 8 percent. I was wondering about incidence, like does it increase with like all the pollution we have? Yes, all inflammatory conditions are increasing at the moment. The more the countries develop, the more inflammatory conditions. Okay. It's crazy. So like it's more and more, so it's not a good news for us, I guess. Um, and the numbers are different. Um, depending on the region. So in the northern, the northern part have higher incidence, while the southern part have less in the world. Interesting, and we don't yes. know what does it correlate with? Like no, uh, not yet. It's, uh, the environment has a certain role, but we don't know w what exactly. Okay. And I have another question. Like on, on the more macro sc micro scale, I, I would say anatomical level, that does the psoriasis uh, start always in the same Location like you saw picture. There are very typical locations where we can find psoriasis, especially at regions where the skin is very thin and sensitive to environment and mechanical damage, like elbows, okay. like or in the yeah where the skin is very thin. So the thinner the skin, the more sensitive it is to any damages from the environment. So there is no genetic signature that we can. Um, assess, I'd say, from the genomic perspective, like to, to predict, can we predict uh, psoriasis? Ah, it's very difficult because there are many stress factors that are, that come together that leads to, to this event, right? Uh, it can be a damage, it can be injury, it can be infection. Uh. Hi, uh, Monika from Weizmann. Um, interesting talk. Uh, I was wondering about especially the psoriasis because it seems to be more and more connected with food or so what people actually eat. Is this also connected with the memory? So maybe what you eat is having an effect on the immune system's memory or is it completely disconnected? For sure, metabolism is connected as well. It has its contribution to memory because eventually cells activation and states are dependent on metabolism, which depends on our dietary, right? Yeah. From Hebrew uni University. Uh, I have also a question. If there is any research, or maybe your research, your research team is connected to psych psych psychological factors that impact this tissue memo memory. In other words, is there any connection between a psychological like memory of a person, may, maybe some fear of a disease, maybe something else, and this memory? Thank you. So you said whether psychological um, effect, factors can affect the disease. Yes, actually, it's a huge impact because stress um, modulates our hormonal system in our body. And this can, like, uh, change the behavior, how our immune system responds. So stress, psychological stress, can have a huge impact. It's like uh, the mindset already can change the disease drastically. Uh, it is known this, that chronic stress is also can contribute to this, the severity of the disease. Hi, I'm Yael from Bar Ilan. Wonderful presentation, not only because it was wonderful, but because I have ulcerative colitis, so I was extra uh. interested. Um, so my question is picking up on Rafael and Ella's questions um, about the connections between genetics um, and also location, because when I was diagnosed in Canada as an Ashkenazi Jew, I was told mm -hmm. that Ashkenazi Jews have very, very high rates of uh. Crohn's and colitis, like mm -hmm. the highest, some of the highest in the world, and in Canada we have the highest rates of Crohn's and colitis. Oh, well, so I was I wondering if you maybe could speak to so that. So genetics play an important role and there are genes that uh, are making the disease more likely to happen but the genetics itself is not enough. We need some more stress factors, we need some more signals to keep 
the changes. So as I said before, we need accumulative adaptive changes over a long time, sometimes it's very short, to, so that the organs re-transform re to something very bad. Nothing comes from zero except for very severe genetic, uh, genetic mutations, but uh, these kind of things are a risk factor, but yeah. Thank you, San, for your great presentation. Thanks.